just woke up here in Naples. Um, it's not always glamorous when you're on the road. I got laundry to do. Uh. I just look like a bag of hammered assholes. Hey, I'm very excited because I have looked all over the state of Florida. I have not been able to find one until today. A self-service car wash. I hate driving around with a dirty truck or a dirty car. I wish I had brought the um, RV up here to wash it too. I may do that before I leave out of town. We've got a load of laundry in the wash. We washed the truck. The lady at the RV park said that the World Championship jet ski races are in town. She said they start practicing today at 1 and then the races are after that or something. So I'm going to swing by and just kind of check out the area. Probably be hell parking later. We got aluminum stands there. You got the beach. It's on this lake. You can see these little buoys out there. Stands across the lake. So this ought to be cool. Maybe after spending a few hours at the beach, I'll come and check out the uh, World Championship jet ski races. So I was just in a uh, tourist shop, and I was standing there looking at some t-shirts, and I sneeze, and out comes a big snot thing, and a lady was standing right there. And the look on her face was classic, because it was like, <laughs> and then she tried to play it cool like she didn't see it, but it was too late. Oh well, shit happens. It's been sunny all morning long while I've ran errands. I get back to the trailer to put on my swimsuit to go to the beach, and it begins to rain. Of course. So, this is the first time I've actually used my kitchen in the uh, trailer for what it was intended. I got tired of paying for food. Some hard-learned RV tips for you. Here is a board, and you have a gray tank, which is like your water from your sink and shower. You have a black tank, as you can see this says two-thirds full, and that is your uh, toilet. You have a fresh water tank, and your... Here is my toilet and my shower. And here is my sink. So let me tell you where my problems began. Inside the toilet goes to a tank, which then goes to this pipe, and then you pull this little black lever to let all the poo-poo drain out into the sewer. When I was in Key West for a week, I kept the hose hooked up for the whole week, and I think the mistake I found out I made was I left the um, left this valve here pulled open the whole time. I guess you're not supposed to do that. Though I do hear a little bit of water going down now. According to this YouTube video I just saw, that's the worst mistake you can make. Because now I have a clogged toilet, which you wouldn't think if it was always open. You so now, besides my day getting just a little bit worse with the rain, I now have a clogged crapper that I have to figure out something to do to get it unclogged. Jeez. So when I bought my RV, I bought this because it's something you can hook up to the RV itself, and then you turn the hose on and clean out the tank like if it's nasty. So I'm going to uh, give it a shot and see what happens, I guess. I may throw poop all up into my bathroom, which would be really disgusting. Here's a good sign. I'm starting to see some brown water <laughs> come through. I know it's kind of disgusting, right? I'm going to blame this clogged toilet on So the air conditioner is leaking. You see it right there. There's the cord. About four inches over. Up one. And we are level, by the way. Alright, it finally stopped raining. So let's uh, kind of recap RV places and how much they cost for an annual uh, basis. Are you ready? Let's go. Perdido Key, up by Pensacola, $4.50 a month, year-round. But they have winters that get down to 30 degrees. Naples, $800 a month. So Naples, $800 a month. Their winters get down to 50 at the lowest. Not too bad. Key West, 80s, 90s, year-round, $3,000 a month or $2,200 if you're not on the water. Hmm. All right, for an hour now in the rain, and now that the sun has come out, I have been working on this, and just now had the biggest blockage of shit go flying through the hole. Well worth it though, because I would have had to pay an RV guy to uh, drop the tank and do all this shit, and it would have been a couple hundred bucks easy. But it's been kind of a fitting little story, because this trip has been kind of shit. I haven't even been to an actual beach beach yet to swim in the water. That kind of sucks. And to prove success, black tank 
Empty. Woohoo! Let's say I get out of these clothes and just swim trunks and get our asses to the beach ASAP. Finally, it's uh, almost 3.30 here, but I'm heading to the beach. I'm maybe five or ten minutes away from it, so. I'm so excited to get to the beach that I ran off and forgot my suntan lotion and a towel. <coughs> Jesus Christ. As you can see, there is nobody here today. So here is what I do have. <laughs> Let's head on out and check out the water. The water feels nice. I am knee deep now. I just realized I still have my shirt on too. See how excited I am? Alright, so let's head back up and uh, take off our shirt and get in and enjoy the water a little bit. So I bought another one of these. It is a beach pillow. You lay your head and neck on it there. And then on the back side, it can hold all your valuables. The sound of the waves and the seagulls. Very nice. Dolphin just uh, arched his back. At least I think it was a dolphin. About 50 yards past that woman. Strange looking anomaly going on out there. It's like clouds falling down to the ocean. It's not rain. Got me a buddy here. Hoping I got some food or something for him. I do not. Unless he wants a Snickers. So, this is how you pay for parking here at the beach. And then we have a little, uh, Sea turtle nesting thing going on here. Goodbye, beach. It's time to go and uh, clean up and get some food. Ooh, I'm starving. I have no towel to dry off the swimsuit, so instead of sitting directly on the leather, I'll use my rain jacket. Ingenuity. That and opposable thumbs what separates us from the All right, we got tons of restaurant and activities guides. Let's figure out what to do for dinner tonight. Well, that was a tad disappointing. Um, most of that stuff was for like jet skiing, parasailing, eco adventures, and then seafood restaurants. I'm done with seafood. I haven't been to Marco Island yet. Um, probably got nothing but seafood restaurants, but if I'm gonna eat at a seafood restaurant, I'd rather do it on an island I haven't seen yet. So that's where I'm headed. Great, I leave Naples, which is still sunshine behind me, to head to this place, which is raining. I can't escape the fucking rain down here. Okay, my um, impression of Marco Island is opulent homes on the interior and condos and resorts. So many condos and resorts along the beach road that you cannot see the beach. I don't even know if there's a public beach access because of all of them. So that kind of makes it an ugly area in my opinion just because it is completely overwhelmed with these types of buildings. You literally cannot see the beach, or the ocean, or even a road that leads to a public beach. I will have to try to find one. But I am starving, and I'm going to eat at this place called Stone Walls. I looked at their menu, and they got pizza, and pizza sounds really good right now. Okay, the inside does not match the outside at all. It's literally an order here, and then sit down and eat kind of place. You have to park here for beach access, and then it's like a half a mile walk. What the hell, people? And it's $8. Again, all the high rises, and as you're driving, you would never see. There's this little skinny path to get to the public beach. 
my impression is that Marco Island doesn't want outsiders visiting the beach. Only people who pay for the resorts and the condos. And if that is not their intention, well then they have completely failed at being open and inclusive to anybody outside of the resorts and condo owners. Alright. You see all the condos and high-rises like Miami or Mexico or something. People coming out to watch the sunset. The beach is here a little more crushed shells mixed with sand. Let's go and check out that water, shall we? Maybe kind of hard to tell as it's getting a little darker. Let's say this, this beach is like a hundred yards wide. It is a big son of a gun. Long. It seems to have a little more of a blue or a green tint to it than it did a little bit up the way there at Naples. It's raining or sprinkling. Of course. We'll walk down the beach to this little pier looking thing and see what we can find. And you can see all the shells mixed in with the sand. So it's a very rocky beach. You can tell these are condos because all those balconies have their hurricane shutters closed, which means those people aren't home. So they have condo number one. Condo number two, condo number three, right here at the end of the south end of Marco Island. Next to those condos, then you get into like the resorts, and then some more condos, and more condos, and more condos and resorts. Jesus Christ, it's like death. I will say this: Fort Lauderdale, or not Fort Lauderdale, but um, Naples, all the way down to here, very calm ocean. I'm sure everyone's a little bummed out that the uh, magnificent sunset is being blocked by all those clouds. But what we can see is pretty. Take a look at how that sun is going all the way up into the clouds like that. Now that's pretty cool. Alright, we have this little rocky peninsula we're going to go out on. Man, that sun's really kicking it with those clouds now for sure. So there's a nice color. The water's a little milky right here. These rocks are really jaggedy. Literally, this guy looks like it's on fire. That is really crazy, and Snapchat is not even catching half this shit. The nice little uh, shallow beach here. You got all the rocks. Then you got these little uh, rock island barrier things out here. Be a good area to do some paddle boarding. Alright, we have a pretty remarkable sunset taking place here. And that sun is hitting these clouds all the way behind me and lighting them up in different areas. It's like the heavens are on fire right there. Here is the sun setting, but then look over here to the left and how it lights up the sky over here. And that is all the way directly behind me, still lighting up the sky. And now we go to the right. Lighting it up there, all the way over there, and all the way behind. And to continue the cool factor, now we go up. And these are all above me right now. Okay, see something else cool? This is going above me. And the clouds above me are all pink and orange. It looks like another planet over there, like a or something into the sky to take into another planet of vortex or some shit. <laughs>
somebody from the company Reef that makes the uh, flip-flops should see this. I would like to share a couple things about your flip-flops. I love them. It's pretty much all I wear. But when you try them on in the store, they're so nice and snug. And literally 24 hours later, they are stretched out and loose. It's a joke. This is my 06th to 7th pair. I have to buy two a year because of how poorly they hold together. And that's with living in Kansas City, where we can only wear them maybe six months out of the year. If this continues, I will be switching brands. Get your shit together, Reef. I can't believe I didn't do a selfie of some sort with that sun setting behind me as crazy as it was. Now it's pretty much gone. Shit. Missed opportunity. I will say getting to the beach through this little access tree of hallway is kind of cool. The other reason I say Marco Island is not friendly to visitors is uh, there is no on-street parking. You get fined $95 and very little public. That is a crazy fluctuation of gas prices in a 10-mile stretch from 206, 229, all the way back down to 209.